Hi, my name is Nathan Baduma, and today I'll be talking about ATP and how it couples exergonic and endergonic reactions. First, we must talk about what the different types of work are. There is chemical work, transport work, and mechanical work. Chemical work mainly involves the synthesis of polymers from monomers. As you probably remember from a previous lecture, it, this can be done through dehydration synthesis, synthesis or the removal of water, for example. Transport work is also important because it pumps substances across membranes against the direction of spontaneous movement. For example, it could help force glucose into the cell where it's needed. Mechanical work, there are many examples of this, for example, cilia beating, muscle contractions, and cell reproduction. An energy coupling is a term that is used to describe exergonic reactions, which are ones that release energy, driving endergonic reactions, which are ones that take in energy. On this slide, we'll talk about the structure of ATP and its hydrolysis. ATP is made up of three main components, ribose, adenine, which is a nitrogenous base, and a chain of three phosphates together like this. So you can probably imagine within the cell. The bonds between the phosphate groups can be broken by hydrolysis, which you probably remember from a previous lecture as well. And this reaction is exergonic, releasing energy. And this energy is then harnessed to drive other reactions. And the reason why the hydrolysis of ATP produces so much energy is because the three phosphates are all negatively charged groups, and they're not stable in one component like that. If one phosphate is removed, the remaining structure, which is called ADP, will be much more stable. On this last slide, we will discuss exactly how the hydrolysis of ATP can perform work. The help, using the help of specific enzymes, the cell can use energy released by ATP hydrolysis in order to facilitate endergonic reactions. This usually involves the transfer of an inorganic phosphate group from the hydrolysis of ATP to another molecule, and this resulting complex is called a phosphorylated intermediate. The phosphorylated intermediate is imperative in some, many reactions because the resultant molecule is usually much more reactive than the original molecule. Transport and mechanical work are almost always powered by this ATP hydrolysis because, for example, transport usually involves a change in conformation of a molecule. And mechanical work, for example, contraction of muscles, is almost directly controlled by ATP presence. I hope this video explains ATP and how it couples endergonic and exergonic reactions. That's all for today. Thank you for watching.